Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. Today, I've got to organize a craft closet. All right, so if you've been around for a while, you know I have a lovely craft studio, but within that craft studio is this craft closet. Upon first inspection, you're probably like, this looks fantastic. And it does. There's a lot of organization. But the issue is that I've got to reorganize it for a few reasons. First of all, I have to move some more stuff into this craft closet to make room for other things in my craft studio. And I also happen to know that I have no idea what is in all those boxes up there. So I think when you think of the type of organization that you like, you're either a closed storage person or an open storage person. I have these boxes that are A, beautiful, very functional, but B, I don't have them labeled. When I put things in those boxes, I don't grab for things out of those boxes, not very often. So what I need to do today is go de-stash what is in those boxes, go through them, declutter, get rid of stuff I don't want. These are old projects that need to be gone through and sorted out in there. I have a lot of stuff right here that needs to get um, de-stashed, decluttered, deorganized. I love my system for organizing paper. However, it's overflowing a bit and there's just, there's a lot going on. Um, as well as I just need to do some rearranging because there's going to be some new things coming into my space. I have a new printer on the way. I have a new Cricut on the way. And this, like this area over here is full. And let's, we're not even going to get into the Alex drawers right now because those um, are, are their whole, their, their own thing, I guess you would say. So here's the plan. I'm going to start with the decluttering, the stashing. We're going to take pretty much everything out, go through it. I'm going to talk through it with you as I do it. Um, and we're going to see how far we get. Then I think next week we'll be um, getting it all back together. So let's start de-stashing. All right. So now that is cleared out. I can take a little time to do some de-stashing, which is what has to be done with all of this stuff. So I'm going to go through the boxes, the papers, all of this business. Don't forget all my 12 by 12 paper got moved over to here. I'm going to go through it all, do some de-stashing, and before I start putting it back, we're going to talk about how to make a plan for how this will work. And now the de-stash process. I opened up every single box, took everything out of the boxes, and then checked what was in there. Then I left the boxes open on the floor because I was rearranging a few things. I don't know what categories I had in mind. This one was pretty clear. Obviously, it's a bunch of Christmas supplies. They were not stored properly, and so a lot of it got bent and a little bit messed up, so that's totally on me. When you're going to store away supplies, make sure you're doing it in a um, really caring way so that your supplies don't get torn or ripped or bent, things like that. I'm a big fan of putting seasonal items away and even putting seasonal items away in something that you can't see through um, because I only need them for part of the year. There's no reason to be staring at Christmas paper in July um, if I would rather just have things out that I'm using. I also had a bunch of things left over from a huge Patreon project that we did in December. I needed to clean that out and I wanted to reclaim this beautiful rainbow basket. It's like my favorite basket ever from, um, let's see, where did I get that one? The container store. It's from the container store and I love it. All right. So as I'm putting things back in the Christmas box, because I need to have it, I um, definitely organized them in a different way. So it was a lot more functional. This one literally just had a bunch of trash. What was I thinking? Do you guys ever think that when you're going through your stuff? Like what? Same thing. What was I thinking? Those are just old packing supplies. I probably had 20 plus pencil pouches. Apparently, I'm a closeted bag lady. Like I just love pencil pouches. So I had to let many go. I kept a lot because I do think that they're really functional and I've used them for different projects in the past. So we're going to keep some, we're going to put the other ones away 
and close that one up. Now, some of the bins I went through and didn't discard anything. This is one of them. The collage bins were the same way. I use these materials. I reach for them on a regular basis. I just wanted to go through, organize them a little bit better. I did de-stash some of my smaller paper and paper pads that were almost completely used up. One option for paper pads like that is you can go ahead and rip out the paper and save the individual papers. It saves uh, less bulk. For me, I knew that I had really gone through those paper pads and gotten all of the pieces out that I love. So I just discarded them, the ones that only had just a few papers left. I think that that's okay. All right, these are old devotional kits. I get asked all the time, when do you break up kits, either scrapbooking kits or devotional kits. I break it up a devotional kit like these from Illustrated Faith or By the Will for God after I have worked through that devotional. Then I don't keep the supplies together anymore. I break them apart into their separate areas of washi tape and stamps and ephemera, things like that. That's when I do it. For scrapbooking kits or paper kits, what I do is I do a couple of projects with the full kit together and then I break it apart into its elements. For me, that just makes sense. I know you're going to want to use the pieces together, but um, eventually it's just, it becomes a hassle just to get all those little tiny bits and pieces and keep them together. For me, I eventually like to break them into their um, separate sections. Man, do I have a lot of paper. These are kind of my miscellaneous eight and a half by 11 paper pads. Again, cleaning out some of the trash that had been there for a while, trying to figure out where things are going to go. These are hard. These are a bunch of contact cards and sticker sheets from Go Wild, which was a wonderful conference that I've been to. I'm actually going to keep those for a little while longer, and I'm going to challenge myself to use them. Sticker storage always challenges me. This is my small shop sticker storage. We're going to kind of see how it goes. This is my basket. I thought maybe putting it in the rainbow basket will make me grab for these more often. And now for the thing that challenges so many of us crafters. This is my 12 by 12 paper. Now, I store 12 by 12 paper kits in these plastic sleeves that I get from Amazon. I will link them below. I love it because I am able to keep collections together. I'm able to keep certain artists or makers together. Love it. However, sometimes they become, I don't know, like a trap for a bunch of scraps. I do like keeping scraps for a while, but eventually it's time to clear out those scraps. If you haven't used them for years and years, you might not actually use them. And that's what I was coming up against with a lot of this paper, paper collections that I'd had for well over a year, some of them two, three, four, five years and hadn't really used them. So it was time to kind of clear them out. 12 by 12 paper pads, you can see I took time to take them apart so I could fit them in the sleeves. I feel good having cleaned out my paper. Did I let go of a lot? Yes, I did. But now I know that what I have is what I'm going to use. All right, so at this point, I've emptied out all of the shelves. Like I said, I think we're gonna have to leave the Alex drawers for next week. I'm going to start putting some things back in because I think that's going to make me feel good. Um, it's a lot of stuff and I think there's going to be a little bit of experimenting. Plus I'm wanting to pull um, something else over here and get it stored. I'm wanting my planners to fit in here. We're going to see how uh, this is all going to work. So I'm going to start placing things. It might be a little bit of a Tetris situation, figuring out how it's all going to fit in in the end. Um, but let's see if we can kind of put the toothpaste uh, back in the tube. When you are fitting things into a smaller space like a craft closet, really consider going vertical like I did here, going up the back wall of the closet. And then I always consider eye level. Where are the things I'm going to reach for the most? Where are the things I'm wanting to see the most? I want to put those at eye level and in the middle because that's where I'm drawn to um, that's where I'm going to grab for supplies. And so if I'm putting supplies on the edges or up really high, those are going to be the pieces that I don't need as often that I'm going to have to pull down a bit more intentionally. And that helps me make sure that I'm really getting the most out of the space and that it's really functioning for how I like to craft. I keep my 12 by 12 paper in these plastic sleeves and then I use pot lid holders to hold them in that vertical position. It just allows me to see them a little bit better. I'm creating a small zone over here on the right. I plan to put my printer, my current printer and my new printer 
over to the right side in that kind of corner area. So why not have all my printer paper in that area as well? You can zone even in small places. I'm moving my paper pads, my eight, um, six by six, all my smaller paper pads all over to where the other 12 by 12 paper is. So now I have a paper zone with collage pieces as well. It just makes sense to kind of zone out some of your pieces. These are my basic office supplies. These are things that my family reaches for also. So I'm going to keep those in the middle so that it's easier for them to get to. More paper makes sense to have it go all on the paper shelf. And then these are uh, dry erase pouches actually and I use them to hold my colorful paper scraps that I need every now and then so I have um, I pick those up at the Dollar Tree they're dry erase pouches that you can use in classrooms but they also hold my scraps really well things I don't need as often I now have labels for these bins I just have to put the label on there but this little um, white piece clips on right here and now I can label the different bins I have future projects and then I have seasonal organized, ready to go. It's not evenly spaced like it was before, but this is about to be a very full closet. Okay, I don't really like where that is right there because I know I'm wanting to move my happy planners all up on that top shelf. So I'm just going to shift things over. Rainbow basket right there, easy to grab. Just making sure everything has a place. These are stickers that I'm creating for my patrons. And I think eventually, yeah, I'm gonna have them on the bottom here and it's gonna be next to my printer that works really well. I pull those out um, when I'm ready to ship so I don't need access to them at all times. A few last bits of paper, again, watercolor paper, mixed media paper, and some craft paper all on the same paper shelf. It just feels much more cohesive. And now let's start to move the happy planners. Previously, my happy planners, happy notes, happy journals, all of those things were in a bookcase in my room. I'm wanting to change that bookcase over for holding product that I am developing and selling in my shop. And so I wanted to clear that out and I thought, let's move the happy planner pieces over here. I'm also hoping that having them out more will make me grab for my past planners. What I have are some keepsake planners all the way to the left. Then I have blank planners that I use for custom spreads and for um, changing things up in my own planner. Then it moves on to happy notes. And lastly, some guided journals. In between each section, I'm using clear acrylic uh, and bookends to kind of separate the sections. I do not need another happy planner ever for the rest of my life. I feel like you all can hold me accountable because I have so many and I have so many covers. I'm excited to be using some different uh, inserts and change things up to try to use the supplies I have. Did you really even reorganize a space if you didn't build new furniture for that space? I am trying to maximize my workflow. So there are multiple times where I need multiple printers going and multiple crickets going at the same time. I want them all in the same area and there is a small space in between my cabinetry and my closet that I would like to take advantage of um, for a second printer. I'm building this little printer stand that um, fits exactly in that little pocket of space ordered it from Amazon. It's perfect. And then my printer can sit right on top of it. This will also be a family printer. Um, and then I have a second printer just to help me get the mass of projects done um, in a more timely manner. All right. So it fits right here. Now I know the question is going to be, can you still open the Alex drawers? Yes, I can open them enough to get out what's in there. Um, at least for now, I do need to take some time and go through those Alex drawers, but that is going to have to be a project for another day. My old printer I was hoping would fit on the bottom of this rack. It does not, so that's super disappointing, but I think it'll end up being right here. That will be fine. Um, it's probably best that it's not so low anyway. That would be really hard to like adjust and, and get things into. Some paper punches that I use on the regular that used to be behind closed doors, but honestly, I grab for them enough. I'm ready to have them out in the open. Last piece for this little printing zone corner, a new printer. I'm loving the EcoTank type printers. I think they have a very good quality. I like the refillable ink. It's just going to work really well for me. 
I feel like it's coming together and I feel much calmer seeing the zones. I was in the mode of just shoving things on these shelves because I have a lot of room. There's a lot of room in this craft closet. There's a lot of shelf room and I was just in the mode of going crazy and shoving things and now everything is calmer and more organized. All right, here is where we are ending for today. Everything has made it back over here, including a new printer, a new Cricut, which is over here. Um, all the happy planners. This is a very full craft closet, but I am actually really into how it looks. I still have some tweaking to do. I need to go through all of those Alex drawers. That is a big task on its own. So that's going to have to be next week's video so stay tuned to see how this all ends up i'm um i'm excited to be going through my space to be taking the time to do things like this um is pretty exciting and actually makes me really um ready to create so thank you so much for joining me today um remember to hit that subscribe button and um if you like the video hit the thumbs up i will have more videos in this organization series as i kind of work my way through my space, get it all cleaned up, and I hope that uh, you'll hang out with me and um, get yourself organized as well. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you all so much for all of your support. You're the absolute best. Um, join us over on Patreon. It is a fun community um, full of crafty people that are there to cheer you on, and we would love to have you. So check out Patreon down in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.